This tutorial will cover travel and exploration. To get started, we'll cover the navigation map, and we'll fly out in front of the station here. And then to open the navigation map, press the default F1 key, and then when the navigation map is open, you can plot a new nav point by just left clicking anywhere on the map. You can also plot a nav point directly to an object in space by right clicking on its icon. You can also optionally set a nav point to an object in space by clicking on a button here under the local points of interest menu. And for large objects such as planets, it will plot a nav point to a safe location next to it in the direction it is from your current location. You can zoom in and out on the map using the zoom buttons here, or you can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Zooming out will bring more sectors into view, and you can quick zoom on a particular sector by right mouse clicking in its sector box. And from there you can go ahead and plot a new nav point in another sector. And I'll go ahead and do that now by right clicking on the station icon here. And selecting the new nav point updates the destination position values here. You can then travel to a new nav point by flying there at cruise speed, or if the distance is long enough, engage the jump drive. Anytime you engage the jump drive, you want to disable the IDS system so that you don't unnecessarily burn fuel. To disable the IDS, press the default spacebar. Then if the installed jump drive has the range to reach the nav point, you can make it in one jump and press the default F8 key to engage the jump drive. I was able to jump directly into the station hangar by lining up my heading with one of the blue arrows on the compass and leveling pitch. Next, we'll go over using the autopilot to make long distance jumps. And to do this, we'll go ahead and open the nav console and zoom out quite a bit. On a side note, if you ever move the map and you want to recenter it, you can use the center button here to center the map to your current sector location. And we'll plot a jump point that is beyond the range of our current jump drive. And we'll do it out in the distance here. Then to engage the autopilot, you can click on the autopilot button either in the nav console or at the top of the heads up display or press whatever key or button you have mapped to the autopilot option. When the autopilot is engaged, it will first line up with the selected nav point. It will then engage the jump drive when ready and continue to do so at each cycle until you reach your destination. The autopilot will plot jump points in the direction of your destination at the maximum range your jump drive can reach and it will continue the cycle until you reach your destination. You can optionally decrease the time between jumps by boosting power to your weapon system, which shares its power reserve from the ship's main energy system with the jump drive. And now that the first jump cycle has finished and the system has recharged, it will begin the final jump to our destination. And then once you've arrived, you can disengage the autopilot and fly to the nav point on cruise speed. When traveling long distances in deep space, it's a good idea to install a fuel converter on your ship. Combined with a mining tractor beam, they can take particles from nebula clouds and stars and convert them into usable fuel. I'll demonstrate that now by traveling to a nearby nebula cloud and then activate the mining beam to full strength to recover particles and then convert them to fuel. And then I'll do the same near a star. Okay, now that I've plotted a jump point to the nebula cloud, I'll engage the jump drive and travel there. For nebula clouds, you don't have to be near the center, you can just pretty much be anywhere inside the cloud itself. And then you can use the tractor beam to recover particles and the fuel converter to transform it into fuel. And once we're in the nebula cloud, I can just come to a stop. You don't need to be moving or anything in a nebula cloud when you're recovering particles. You can just kind of sit still in the middle and I'll activate the mining beam and let it reach full strength and then you can watch the fuel gauge start to increase. To activate the beam, press and hold the default B key or press and release the Alt-B key combination. And there you can see the fuel level increase on the lower left cockpit display and you can also view your ship's fuel level in the inventory console. And next we'll fly near a star and recover particles that way. When it comes to stars it is important to fly closer to the star in order to have enough particle density necessary to create fuel. And you can see here that I've jumped close enough to this star that the gravity indicator is over 800 at this point. And that's close enough to recover particles at a very high rate, and you can see the fuel gauge increase rapidly. Next, we'll review how to manage vertical elevation. In 3D space, objects can be above or below your position, including by over a sector or more. To get started, I'll zoom out, and then I'm going to try to snap zoom in on this station icon here. And you can see what happens is the station icon disappears. And the reason is, is because I zoomed through it. Its elevation is a sector above mine. So when I zoomed in, it was then out of range and I can switch to the rear view map mode to see that elevation distance. So to plot a nav point to that station, I can simply right click on its sector while in the rear view mode and it will center the map to that sector. 
Then from there I can return to the top view, and now with the new sector centered in the map, I can zoom in and out and the station icon will remain in view. And just as before, right clicking on the icon itself will plot a nav point directly to the station. And with that done, I can go ahead and turn to change my heading to align with one of the arrows on the compass, indicating where I can line up with one of the hangars, and then engage the jump drive and travel directly to the station's hangar. Lastly, we'll go over how to configure and deploy a jump caster. A jump caster lets you travel up to 1,000 sectors away at a time, but does require the use of 50 units of metal ore in order to create. So to do that, we first must open the build console. And we can see here on the cargo bay list that we have enough metal ore. Building a jump caster also requires a deploy constructor, and if I switch over to the inventory console, you can see where that is installed on our ship here in the equipment list. First, we need to set up the jump caster parameters before we can build it. And to do that, you just switch over to the navigation console and then select a nav point where you want the jump caster to travel to. You can travel short distances with jump casters, but they're best reserved for long distance travel. And then just use your ship's jump drive to travel shorter distances. In the nav console, you can switch to the quadrant map mode and then you can view all of the systems in the area. If you want to zoom in on a system, simply hold the mouse pointer over that system and then right click on it. You can then get a remote view of the objects in that system that are logged in the navigation database. So for this example, I'll select a jump point next to this planet here. You can use the values here in the build console when you hold the mouse pointer over the jump caster button to determine how far away the nav point you select is in sectors. Once you've established a jump point that's in range, you can go ahead and build the jump caster. The jump caster will then be constructed out in front of your ship. And once the assembly beams have finished building the jump caster, you can go ahead and fly through it to travel to the selected destination. You can see here on the cargo bay list where the two sets of 25 units of metal ore were used to construct the jump caster. And we'll go ahead and fly through the jump caster. And that'll do it for this tutorial. Refer to the instructions included with the game or online for more details.